truck here, you know, that, that's a big old truck. Just like an old Texas gal. Yeah. Come on in, let me show you. Yeah. It's a mess, like most studios are, you know. But uh, I'm working pretty hard right now, so I'm not taking any time to do my necessary chores. So anyway, this is it. Uh, let me show you this. The studio I'm in now is my 26th studio. So I've made models of all of them, except this one. And I wouldn't make this one unless I left, and I'm not planning on leaving. So uh, I made models, and then I have some real work and some photographs of work inside them that I did when I was using these studios. This is the first one. This was my parents' house. This was their garage. And there's a little drawing that was in the yearbook. And there was the first painting I ever did that I thought was successful in a little mom and pop art school I went to, Texas Academy of Art. And then I was into pinstriping then too, so there's some of that. So all these have work from the period that I was in. So there's 25 of them. So they start in Houston and they end in Houston there, but there's Tampa, Florida, Washington, D.C., well, Forestville, Maryland, Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut, Oakland, Berkeley. So they're from they're from coast to coast, really, you know, kind of. Uh, and some of them I did a lot of work in. This was I had these horrible. The ones with the little doors on them are are garages, and some of them are horrible. This was a studio I had in Austin, and it was just terrible, just roaches and everything. So I have just one black painting because I didn't do any work that was very good in there at all. This one was, uh, that's in Connecticut, that's in Hartford. Uh, that was some work on paper. And I did a lot of paintings there. It was a good studio. I'll show you one that's kind of interesting. Wait a minute, where is it? Uh, let me get by you around Here's here. one with the studio houses on Yeah, that's the photograph. I, I did those at the other studio over on Studiewood. Here's a Quonset hut. I had a Quonset hut. Big Quonset hut. Do you miss it? Yeah, but it didn't have a bathroom and it didn't have AC or anything like that. But it's a good studio. There's one of the early ship of fools there. But what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, this one. This was number 17, 1045 and a half studio with Houston. Sarah House, born in this room, 31878. My daughter was born in this room right here. So, which was way more exciting than I meant to be. Uh, I was looking for another one here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Berkeley. I have a studio in Berkeley. That's uh, Buda, Buda, Texas. You've moved around. Yeah, 40 something times. Why were you living in all those 40 places? Times. Well, Part of it was when I was in the Air Force. Part of it was when I was in school. Jobs, teaching jobs, stuff like that. You've always been able to get jobs teaching art? Yeah, yeah I did, 42 years, yeah. And then I retired. Uh, did you ever have to do anything else? Yeah, that? sure, I worked as a, I sold art supply at Carlson Art Supply, which was the worst job I ever had. I woke up with a headache every day. Or construction. Uh, I was the art director at Channel 11 for a while. I, my first job was at Channel 13 when I was 19. So yeah, I did, and I did a lot of other things. I started out in commercial art, so I had jobs in commercial art. <coughs> I, was, I had a studio in Berkeley. It was called the Hygienic Dog Food Company. <laughs> I was trying to find it. I can't. What's I, this one? This was when I was back here in 71. This was on West Main in the apartment. Rounded. West Main and what? West Main and uh, uh, Dunleavy, sort of, I think. Mm. Yeah. And this is when I was art director at Channel 13. And I had, this is Mr. TV. I, I didn't like television much by that time. The, the people, I just didn't enjoy working there as much. Some people I did. I, I had a real good time with them. 
but because of the personalities that yeah, work there. Yeah, they, you know, they would uh, just go crazy over, you know, a, a tragedy like a uh, hurricane or something. And I, I don't know, I just didn't, I, I, I didn't work well with others. Is what ended up happening. So that's kind of that. And these are, these are things I'm doing now. Uh, this one is another aftermath piece, and that was done a few weeks ago. I've done, uh, I didn't realize that I started these in July last year, so it's been a little over a year. And the one I'm working on now is my, my 40th painting. So I've been doing quite a few of them. I, just, I love working on this paper. I really like working on the paper. I like this black and white one too. I like the undercolor. I like the red a lot. In fact, this one. That's red? This is it looks pink. Yeah. No, that's red. That's is it because it's, it's because combined? Of you. <laughs> that's that's red as can be. Look at how okay, red it is. but I think because of the gray overtone, yeah, it casts a different. It could, yeah. Uh, a pink, because I mean, it looks red on the edges. This, you are doing this in color, right? Okay. Yeah. Because the problem with this is, if it's photographed in black and white, this red will be red. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, as black. Oh. The camera would see it as black, so I, I have to not allow it to be photographed in, in black and white. It has to be photographed in color. <coughs> That's another helter skelter. And these are not are these these are finished because you're signed them. Yeah, they're finished. They're finished. So this is where the houses all go everywhere now. So the f the design is increased in size rather than small but your other paintings were they were everything was a little bit more there was more information there were, there were more houses and these have yeah, grown that, to yeah, more yeah. lot size right <laughs> you're right that, you're exactly right yeah and and here on these when i uh get the, can you get the boxes out of the way mm -hmm. anybody uh when i started doing the fragments the helter skelter where they're, they're broken up into fragments the earlier Happyville paintings had to be real pastel because they were Happyville. They were Walt Disney colors kind of. But now they, I have to darken to make the contrast a lot sharper or, or you won't see the edges. The pastel ones, it, it, it didn't work. They just faded into each other. So I had to make more contrast out of them. And then this is another aftermath piece. I just did this one the other day. So uh, I'm just... I, I'm, it's, I'm working differently. I thought I was through with the houses for one thing, the happy building and everything. I thought I wasn't going to do it anymore. Uh, usually when I, I became a series worker somewhere along the way. I didn't mean to, it just kind of happened. And usually when I end the series, like uh, Southern Dinners or the Explosions or something, they're over. I, I quit them. I, I try to move on somewhere else. Now, I don't know why. Maybe it's the freedom of the paper. Uh, I'm working in about three or four different directions. I'm, I'm still doing the aftermath. I'm st still doing the houses. And then I'm doing what I call more intuitive work. Not not the houses or anything. It's a little bit more abstract. Your aftermath is, again, there's less clutter in the works. Opening up a little bit the Is space. it because yeah. of where you are in your life now that you know, things are just kind of opening up and you're feeling a little bit freer and you're having more more negative space uh, <laughs> showing up? I couldn't feel any freer than I do right now after being <laughs> you know, retiring and, and everything else and, and, and the freedom of working on the paper. I, no, I just, uh, I still want to do some of those. I, I still have some ideas about them. So I'm kind of doing four different things, sort of at the same time. This one, the, the plate, I haven't done an exploded plate in years, and I just decided to do another one. It's just time and, you know, uh, a little bit of supplies and what else do I have? Are these new yeah. up here? No, those are older. Those are older. Yeah, that's in that little aftermath, and that's from Southern Dinners. That plate, see what it says? Uh -huh. Why will you die? That was an actual plate. I think it was from Tennessee or somewhere like that. Uh, so I stole it. But, so yeah, then this one, I just started this one this, this morning. 
so I, I've still got to do a lot. Uh, I'll have a pat, some kind of pattern on here. Might be fish, might be birds, might be more delf like. I, I don't know yet. <coughs> just, just sorry. Do you wake up with an idea or a color in your mind? Sometimes, sometimes you just get sometimes. jump out of bed and Actually, you gotta what go. was it? I did do that. Uh, I woke up. Oh, I know. I, I did a painting of a, a black skull on a, a plaid tablecloth, orange and yellow and blue plaid tablecloth. And I woke up. This was just a few months ago. It was one, one of these, one on paper. And I woke up with with that image. And rarely, rarely does that happen. And I've asked other artists, and the same thing. They said the same thing sometimes, but not not often. I just, I come down, I love being in the studio. I live upstairs and my studio is down here and I love coming down here and working so uh, I just put up a piece of paper and uh, look at it and, but, but you know, I'm, I'm doing things that I've been thinking about for years. It's not like I'm just going, hey, I think I'll do this, you know. Uh, I think that's the way, I, you know, we all work. I work from work. I do something, I learn from it, and then that goes to another piece. In, or reference, in a referential sort of way. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, Earl Staley, a uh, Houston painter, a friend of mine, saw the show at the Art Car Museum, and, and I asked him, I said, does, does it look like six different painters? You know? And he said, no, no. He says, you can see a lot of the images in the older work are still coming out in the newer work. Mm -hmm. You know that? Yeah. So. Is this this is older wood? That's yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's not too old. That's just maybe two or three years old. And that one down there is from the uh, uh, southern dinners. That, that's older. And actually, this one here, the black and white one, the triptych, little triptych, is from '90, I think, or '91, something like that. Yeah, I did some a lot. I, did, I worked in black and white for about two or three years. It's got to be right if it's black and white. You can't, you know, you can get by with murder with color, but black and white is going to be, going to be right. What was uh, the reason behind getting behind the black and white? What was that about? Just to, uh, well, uh, you can't, can you see that big one up there? Mm -hmm. Can you get that up to there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that's the shield. The chair, the mirror, I think, or the, the, the shield, the table and the mirror, I believe, I'm, I'm not sure. So I worked like that for uh, three or four years. I, I think I did it just to uh, study my values more than anything else, to get the, the values correct, uh, the darks and lights where they belong. And then I went back to color, so, you know. Uh, Is that where this came in? From black to the color? Yeah, but this was a long time later. This is again, that's an aftermath. Painting with it. rain. Being rain now. Okay. Can you get that with all that reflection? That's all right. Huh. Yeah. So. That's a nice picture of you. <laughs> You've already seen that one, right? That's a, these are Casey Williams took these photographs. This piece right here, that's the. Oh, the abstract expressionist, I believe, is who yeah, all that is. Yeah, clearly. Well, and there's, there's Warhol, too, so. This is what I came back from Rome. That's the main thing that influenced me. When I started uh, the, the stuff around the swimming pools, I ended up making them that, like that terrazzo. Mm -hmm. It's a sidewall. And that's after seeing the Sistine Chapel and everything. This is what I came home with. And I've had this up. In my studio for years, destruction. Uh huh. Yeah, so yeah, I've had that up way before I ever started painting the destroyed house. And what was and the attraction to that? Well, it looks it, yeah, it looks sculptural sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And just the way it's arranged. So. Okay. Uh, now what? Let me get some water here. And what's this series? Southern dinners, that's a, a tablecloth. That's yeah. hmm? It's beautiful. You like it? Yeah. See these lines? Here, let me show you something. Just stay on it up. So, uh, 
So yeah, this is uh, from Southern Dinners, and, and it's kind of like your grandmother's quilted tablecloth, you know. It's quilted, is that right? Quilted, I'm not sure. So I didn't want to go in there, in this area, and have to put every little line, so I made this brush. So, so it would do four lines at a time. So, you know, I'm just lazy, you know. No, I'm not going to go in there and do that every, every line like that. So, yeah, it's, it's got body fluids on it, sort of. Southern Dinners, again, was about elegance and violence, the, the elegance of the South. And I just used the metaphor for the uh, tablecloth for elegance, you know, all the beautiful crystal and everything. But then there's the other side of the South also, which every place has its bad side. It's not just the South, you know. <laughs>